Before I start my formal presentation, with the permission, with the leadership of the conference, I propose to stand up for 30 seconds, silent, for the people whom we have lost during the last two years, during the COVID times. Thank you. <clears throat> Very good morning. It is indeed a great pleasure and honor for me to be here. This is the fifth or sixth time I am in St. Sebastian. I always feel that I am learning new, and which is the heart of innovation. Innovation cannot stop, always go. I went to Technica to see every time they are changing. And that's the excellence. And rightly, San Sebastian is a city of excellence. So I feel very happy to be here. I'm sure, like me, many of you here, this is the first face-to-face -face conference that you are attending. You see the magic after two years when I see my friends, colleagues, everybody, and we hug each other, we feel a pulse of human touch. And that, I feel we are very blessed. Many people has, do not have that opportunity because devastating has happened country by country side. Perhaps you will agree with me that one thing is common, irrespective of any country, big, small, High GDP, high GDP, low GDP, whatever ranking you can do, there is a feeling of vulnerability about the present and uncertainty of the future. I see everywhere that has happened, starting from America to Europe, go to Latin America, or go to Africa, everywhere. We suddenly thought, can we return to normal? Is it the life that we have to lead? And that way, the question came to me. This COVID is not the first and last one. There will be several type of COVID will come because we are living in a very complex world. And I thought, how Tibet has to be prepared to take up the challenge? Along with digital and climatic transition, what is the new thing that we have to think that we have not done, so that we have suffered a lot, so much. So that's my presentation is resilient Tibet in the volatile world. We are passing through a challenging time. This time is called VUCA world. VUCA means volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. COVID-19 is one of the manifestations of the VUCA world and in different form, it will reappear again. The question is, what Tibet will do to face up this challenge? To be more agile, more resilient, and fight it back. First, we need to know what you mean by resilient. We all know resilience is a mental characteristic of an individual who are able to recover quickly from difficult situation, like adversity, trauma, trade, depression, stress, in a way. But they come back very quick. Some could not be able to come back. This is a way to develop these characteristics. You cannot automatically become a resilient person. There has to be some way you have to look at. Tibet institution, we have not paid attention to that. We are talking of technology, climatic change, labor market. Excellent. These are all necessary. But where is the resilience? Where the world suddenly stops, the people get puzzled. What is the advice we have given? Have we prepared them for that? That is the, my question 
And that's, I like to search the answer. Why it is so? Youth need to be resilient in present times. In a turbulent, complex, and disruptive times, future of youth is uncertain and unpredictable. Changes are drastic, sometimes devastating. Youth have to be agile to cope up with this situation to survive and bounce back. Tibet must prepare a learner for resilient skill. VUCA world demand that. Then we need to know what are the resilient skills. According to me, there are three major forms of resilient skill. First is the mental resiliency. How much, not only physical health, mental health. I do not know how many Tibet institutions really measure the mental health and have a course and curriculum on that. Learning resiliency, like because suddenly everything stop, school stop, face-to-face -face meeting is stop, but you have to survive. You have to know how to learn by yourself. That is learning resiliency. And third is technological resiliency. Sometimes it is scary when I see one after another things are changing technology and we feel we are all backdated, we can't able to survive. So that is technologically how become, we become a resilient. Let's take first mental resiliency. Mental resiliency is six domains of resilience. First, you must have a clear vision. Second, a good composer. Regulate your emotion. Some people can regulate emotion very well, some do not. Very good reasoning power. Problem solving, resourcefulness, anticipate and plan. Most importantly, health, which I think yesterday Dennis rightly pointed out, health and well-being. Physical health and mental health, these are very, very important SDG3. Tenacity, patience, realistic optimism, capacity to bounce back, and finally, collaborations. That is needed, and you must be embedded with the community to get strength. You know, I was in India, Kolkata. COVID was devastating. Just to cut my sh story short, everybody was so depressed. But you know, who has inspired us in that? It's the community. Those who are preparing vegetables, they, they really do the feeding us because supply chain was all stopped. No mall was there. Disruption is unbelievable. So that's why collaboration network is so important. The second is the learning resilience. You know, future learner must be self-managed, autonomous learner with lifelong learning. I know there was online learning, this and that has happened. But it really has not reached the level where face-to-face -face what teaching and learning can happen. So what was necessary? Learner was self-managing and becoming lifelong learner. For that, what we need, the skill. The first one, interpersonal skill. Time management, discipline, you have to keep yourself autonomous. Second, interpersonal skill, presentation, teamwork, all this come. Cognitive skill, thinking, problem solving, others. And most importantly, learning to learn skill. It is not important only the content to be learned. You know how to learn new subjects how to approach a new subject. That is called learning to learn skill. In my school days, no teacher has told me that how to read a manual, how to do a programmatic sequencing. They didn't tell me. They only taught me very well about the subject, which is like a glass is half full and delivered the lecture, everything done, teaching learning is complete. So that's why I give much importance to learning to learn skill. What is technological resilience? Technological resilience is like 
we are facing now preparing learner for technology that are yet to be invented. Mostly you are teacher. Definitely you agree with me. We taught in our old days where there is a textbook. We are all aware this is the technology tested, proven, and we start teaching. But now, the technology, we don't know. Nobody knows. But you have to prepare the learner for that. What is the magic behind it? How learner will prepare themselves for a technology that has not yet been invented? But we have to do in the VUCA world, because we know the things will change fast. For reason, you see, technological and digital transition, Vice Minister has rightly has elaborated, like we are moving from divergent technology to convergent technology. More and more different disciplines are converging, and it is, has a new way of looking the thing. It is no more electrical, electronic, civil engineering. It is mechatronics, biotechnology, bio and technology. You are talking of information, communication, technology, all are merging. So new technological arena has come. Greening transition, which is basically from fossil fuel to renewable energy. Development focus is from traditional to sustainable development. This is the arena which Joao has already explained about, you know, these are the new occupation coming, non-destructive fish farming, green and technology, hospital and healthcare is using massive technology, circular economy, additive manufacturing, automotive transport, the list can be on, on, and on. These are all new emerging technology come. But how we will prepare them to be resilient learner so that they can adapt this very quickly? For that, a combination of TS, GS, and FS is needed. TS means technical skill, which is immediate skill that is need for occupation to become livelihood. But that is not sufficient. If you are only teaching TS, you are not preparing learner for the future for the VUCA world. Second one will be GS, generic skill. Under generic skill, learning to learn skill will be the generic skill, soft skill that is needed, the adaptability to run and flexible. But that is also not sufficient. Because when domain is changing, you must have a foundation. If you are not good at mathematics, arts, engineering, technology, and science, you will be very difficult to adapt the shifting of the domain. So what we need, foundation skill as a base, generic skill as an attitude, and technical skill as a TS. So that's why foundation skill is very, very important. Forget about days when Tibet is called about only manual skill. There is a gray area now between university education and technical and vocational education. Because of this, technology become very complex, and you must have a foundation skill to cope up with. We need, in the time of disruption, a pillar of resilience, applied innovation, development vector of the local growth, and culture of bottom-up innovation, which is nothing but vocational excellence, which already has been discussed a number of times. During the Tibet COVID time, many Tibet institutions have shown their resiliency. Because of shortage of time, I cannot go detail. I know from country to country, the Tibet volunteers and Tibet institution has done a tremendous good contributions. I only refer one. The place where we are, Technica has come up with a transparent, sustainable mask by using 3D technology. I was so happy to see this is a response to the social demand because that was, that time, it was so necessary. But I know that Canada, UK, uh, Brazil, there are a lot of story I have collected where I, was, I have seen that how resilient they are quickly come to take that challenges. This is the first level, which is the immediate need. 
The second was long-term solution, reskilling, upskilling program for livelihoods, building capacity and preparing for just transition. I am personally involved in India now in a very remote place called Sundarban, where we are doing this project. And I am very happy that two of the members from Technica already visited there to make a bridge and solidarity. I really appeal to you that in the reskilling program, the community level engagement to prepare for long term will be very, very needed. So that's why we are training the, retraining the migrants with the skill of local, localization of skill. I think that's the key word we have to keep in mind. Localization by content, localization by delivery, and localization by approach. How we can prepare learner for the VUCA world? We must be adaptable, flexible, and learning to learn. Handling uncertainty and risk. Risk management, mastering disruptive innovation and entrepreneurial learning or entrepreneurship. Promoting culture of solidarity and inclusive excellence. Prioritizing digital and green transition. Developing resiliency, mental health, and cognitive skill. Big lesson during the COVID times. We have to remember, remember, because we don't want things to be repeat again and again. We have to fight it back, and we have the capacity. The first thing we have to know, we alone cannot be safe until all are safe. If the world is not safe, you, however developed country you are, doesn't matter, you are not safe. So being have to be global, and solidarity is the way forward. So that will guarantee your your safeness. Second, life is more than lifestyle. It is not mall where branded things, consumerism, materialism, it's not life. Life is more than that. It can offer you more. So we need to understand that. Nature is the source of light, life, not just resources. The way we have behaved with nature to exploit them, extract them. Shame on us. World was so beautiful in all respect, but we didn't keep that. We extracted as maximum, and we used them as a resource, not as a source of life. World is not for human only. This world is for all the species. We have to respect biodiversity. And the culture of biodiversity have to be respected everywhere. And if we don't give pay respect, they will bounce back. Put people and skill at the heart of digital transition. So whenever talking of digital and green transition, always keep in mind human, people, and skill at the heart. Last, there are Delors report on UNESCO. I will say two stand is very important. One is learning to be, and another one, learning to live together. In all the school, my request is, learning to be and learning to live together should be one of the very important component you must include. Therefore, situation demand a new vision to be integrated in the TVET curriculum. Please, don't go back to business as usual. Just do not tell about digital transition and climatic transition. You have to think a new type of curriculum where humanity will converge with technology, and the vision is humanity will be on the top. And this humanity will be based on three major components, resilience skill, Solidarity and inclusive ex excellence. Solidarity between elderly people and young people in the COVID times we have observed. That is so important. Solidarity between developed country and developing country. And lastly, it is about inclusive excellence. Thank you very much for your kind and listening.
I have finished it.